the implications of stereotypes transmitted by popular female figures and cultures, whether toys or characters on TV shows or just all these generalizations. And I've recently started rereading the Harry Potter books, which most people who know me for more than five minutes know that I am obsessed with. And I just realized how much I love J.K. Rowling's depiction of her characters because it's so unique and you don't see it as much anymore. The, the way they just stand on their own and how lifelike they are. And I feel like looking at characters like this can teach us a lot about what real women can be. And I'd like to start with Luna Lovegood. And the quote, I just love that quote, the things we lose always come back to us in the uh, unexpected ways. And she's a character that's just, despite the what people think of her, she's so wise in that way. And she will, when she thinks something, she's gonna say it and she doesn't really Think about how she comes across. She doesn't care what she looks like to other people. She is her, she is quirky, she's strange. She gets picked on a lot because of those differences. Even so much to be called by others, loony love good behind her back. Although, don't be fooled, she knows about it. But she doesn't care because she is her own person and I just love how open she is to everything and despite all of the pick, being picked on and having people throw these names on her, she just, she's so open-minded and she will believe anything until proven otherwise. Whether mystical creatures are just, everyone knows doesn't exist to finding the smallest bit of spark of light in the darkest moments. And she's, I just admire her so much for that. And I think we could all aspire to be a bit more like Luna. But Matt, uh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today, but the <laughs> next person I wanna talk about is one that is less often seen in a positive light. Often she is put down upon by the fans of the series. I can't pronounce your name, but I'll just call her Delacour. But she is, for those of you who have read the books or watched the movies, you will know the stereotypes. But for those of you who haven't, she is often seen as very condescending, um, really devoted to herself and her looks and appearances. And I think that's a popular stereotype for women should be all about looks. They should care about how they project themselves. They should care about beauty and all this. But when you look at her and you look at some of the things she has done in the series, she is so much more than a pretty face. She is one third or fourth Vila, which in the Harry Potter series basically means she could get any guy to fall head over heels with her. Velas are kind of like sirens, I guess, in that way. Yet, though it is shown she has had a giant group following her around in a few scenes, she doesn't pick the handsomest, she doesn't pick the wealthiest person. At the end of the series, she stands by Bill Weasley from a poor family often mocked for their social status. He's in the sixth book, and yes, this will be a spoiler. He gets attacked by a great back and receives permanent scars. And everyone, most of the fandom included, as well as the characters, expected her because she is considered vain to 
say, oh, look, you're not his anymore. I'm going to leave. But no, that's her quote. She doesn't care. People stereotype her that way, but she doesn't. She has brains. She cares about personality. She is so much more than a pretty face. She is so strong. And if you think for one moment that if anyone doubted that, she would not hex you to next week, you're very sadly mistaken. Because <laughs> I could see her doing that. And she really does deserve way more recognition because she is not two-dimensional by any stretch. And Last but not least, in case you cannot tell, she is my favorite. <laughs> Nymphadora Tonks. Do not call her Nymphadora, or she will hex you as well. She does not like that. There's a lot of reasons Tonks is my favorite character. And honestly, I thought about doing one all on her, but I don't know. I felt like she, I don't know. It seemed like this chair really worked. but. Tonks, out of all of them, might be the one I admire most. She has the ability to change her appearance into anything, anyone she wants. And yet, she doesn't choose to be the most beautiful person. She doesn't choose to be gorgeous or change her appearance to fit what other people want. No, she does. Bubble's on pink hair in the book, so that's more purple. She does punk clothes. She likes fan shirts and all this stuff because why not? I like it. It's something that makes me me. I don't care if it's, you know, not really looked well upon for a young lady. I am an individual, I am myself, and it just screams talks to me. And she comes from, for those of you who don't know, her mother comes from a very distinguished family. And she gets disowned because she doesn't want to follow the social rules, I guess. And she falls in love with Ted, a muggle born, which it's kind of like, I don't know, back in the old days where there's high class and then there's peasants and they consider anyone who's not pure of blood, you know, dirt under their feet. So Tonks here already has this reputation for her family and I can easily imagine her at Hogwarts getting picked on for this and being bullied and being told She's no good because of her family, but what's awesome about her is I am not my family. I am an individual. I am smart. I am kind, and I'm going to prove you wrong. She joins basically the wizarding version of a police force, knowing that one day she might come, uh, come up against family who would literally seek her out and kill her. And she doesn't care. She goes against everything because she stands up for what she believes she should stand up for. She stands up because she wants those she cares about to grow up in a world where they don't have to be afraid of being different, of being themselves, of being an individual. They don't have to worry about the negative stereotypes. They can watch their children grow up with each other. And I don't know, she's so selfless in a way for that, but at the same time, she is about self. And it's a strange way to think about it, really, to be both about yourself and to be about everyone else, which is something you don't hear a lot about in culture. It, usually it's either one or the other, but she embodies both, and I really, really admire talks.